call this meeting of the Wycombe Municipal Court to order on this 13th day of August 2024 at 5 p.m. I'm going to ask Jimmy Cantrell to come forward and uh, lead us in a prayer and place the flag. Dear kind, precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity, this another day, just to glorify and honor you. Dear Lord, we ask you to bless our community. Bless those leaders, dear Lord, that come together, that makes decisions, and that those decisions be within your will, dear Lord. Bless our nation, dear Lord, just pour your blessing upon this nation and this community. Dear Lord, we just pray that your presence be here. We pray, dear Lord, that things be done within your will. Dear Lord, we also want to thank those and praise those and honor those that give their lives for us to be able to come together as we do. Those veterans and all those people that do so much for us, dear Lord, so that we can have these freedoms. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this glorious day, this meeting, and dear Lord, that everything that will be done will be done within your will. For everything we do and we ask, we do it in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now then, Tim, bring your, go ahead and bring your guests up with you. I'm trying to see if you can get the picture of separate by this, I guess. Or should I go around there? I'll go around there. Come on up here, stand back there, and I'll come around. You come up stand with me. You don't have to swear, but you can stand <laughs> Okay, we're fixing to swear in. Timothy Ray Griffin as the uh, uh, appointed constable in the third district. Uh, so uh, what you do is raise your right hand, and when I pause, you say, I do. And there'll be a few times of it. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. Hey, David, of, before you begin, is this the swearing in where we only have four hours notice for a candidate? This is my appointment for the constable this in the is third the district. To fill it until the election. So was our candidate considered? No. No. Now this, this, Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's not have any interruption. This is sort of special. Just want to know on record. Thank you. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth and be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky so long as I continue to be a citizen thereof, and that I will faithfully execute to the best of my ability the office of Constable of the 3rd District. I do. And I do further solemnly swear that since the adoption of this present Constitution, I being a citizen of this state have not thought a deal with deadly weapons within the state nor out of it, nor have I sent or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons, nor have I acted as a second in carrying out a challenge, nor aided or assisted any person thus offended, so help me God. I do. I do swear that I will do right as well by the poor as rich in all things belonging to my office, and that I will do no wrong to anyone for any gift, reward, or promise nor favor or hatred, and in all things I will faithfully and impartially execute the duties of my office according to the best of my skill and judgment, so help me God. I do. I do further solemnly swear that I will endeavor to the best of my ability to detect and prosecute all gamblers and others violating laws against gaming. I do. You are now official. Thank you. David, do y'all want to turn around and go this way? The light right behind you is off. Come this way for pictures. Here we go. You want to shake hands? Thank you. Shake hands. Awesome. There we go. Congratulations. Right. Uh, she'll get you a copy of this. Okay. Come here. Thank you. And, and I'm go you can go ahead and sit down, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about that all. Okay. Every deputy sheriff that comes in and gets sworn in has to hear this. I'm sorry for you guys, it's already heard it 40 times. But uh, the, uh, 
uh, thing about the duels, that was done in many states at one time, but now it's just Kentucky and maybe a few others that has that in their oath of office, but it's still in there because early in our country's history, uh, many disputes, including political disputes, were settled by a duel to the death usually. And uh, our first uh, Secretary of State, Alexander Hamilton, was killed in a duel by the third Vice President of the United States, Aaron Burr. Uh, President Andrew Jackson was in at least two duels, uh, and the, uh, he killed his opponent in uh, one duel, or he died actually a day or two after he was shot, but uh, Andrew Jackson was shot too. He got hit as well and they think that contributed to his death many years later. But that's why we decided, hey, you know, as American people, we're better than that. We're not going to uh, do that. And I understand why it has to be a part of our oath is because uh, if you're ever in a long election year and you're getting down in October and you're so tired, you've, uh, that, hey, it, it'd be tempting if your opponent comes to you and say, hey, let's get this done today. It'd be tempting. So anyway. And then uh, on another part of it, yeah, for it. Uh, and then another part of it was uh, about the uh, not taking bribes, basically, that you do no thing for favor or hatred or whatever. Uh, there was actually a time in our nation, even in my lifetime, uh, I was very young when it was stopped, that that uh, law enforcement took bribes openly and it was just done. Uh, thank goodness we're beyond that now. That's why that's in the other. The part about the gambling, catching gamblers, was when Kentucky passed the, or, uh, the uh, state lottery. Uh, the state wanted all the gambling money. They didn't want anybody else to have any. So that's why they had to crack down on gambling. So that's so much for that. Um, we're going to have a sh real quick public meet hearing now. Nobody's going anywhere. We'll do it right now before we get back into the other county business. Uh, this is on our tax rates. If anybody's here to make any comments about tax rates, which if you've got a problem with them, I'd say you can move anywhere else in, in the country and you're going to pay more than we do here. So I will say ours is very, very low. But uh, does anybody have anything to say about our tax rates? Um, But that's uh, that's sort of that speech. And that was official public hearing. Everyone, anyone have, would have had a, a opportunity to comment on tax rates. Uh, before you gentlemen, you have the uh, minutes of the uh, July 23rd meeting. I need a motion to approve. Call the order. Well, I did already. We, I'll make the motion. That was a pause. Uh, motion by Jason Bullock. Second. Second by Bo Ben. Is there any discussion, corrections, or additions to the minutes? If you have any discussion about them, or I do encourage you to read them, and because that's the way we uh, make sure they're right is to have this uh, reading of the minutes from the previous meeting. With none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign, opposed to carry. Before you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, I don't think there's any like this this time. So, bills, claims, payments, and transfers, I need a motion. Make a motion to approve our bills, claims, payments, and transfers. Second. Motion by Michael McKinney. Second by Brian Dan. Is there any discussion on the bills, claims, payments, and transfers? Any discussion? Being then, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like was. Motion carried. You have the treasurer's July financial statement. <coughs> we just need to acknowledge that we got that. Motion to move to Motion by Bo Benning. Second. Second by Jason Bullock. 
Is there any discussion or questions? <coughs> Being none, all in favor say aye. aye, aye, aye. Opposed, like signs. Motion carried. Next, one we have the clerk's July financial report. Uh, and our clerk is here, so if we get into it and we have questions, we've got somebody to ask. I'll acknowledge we received our report. Motion by Jason Bull. Second. Second by Michael McKinney. If there's no questions for Bess, I'll tell her, hey, thanks a bunch, and we're glad that it's here. I was hoping someone would have a question for you, but that's okay. I got saved. Yeah, you did. <laughs> All fair say aye. Aye. Post like sign. <coughs> we have it on file. Do we have a bid from the Center Town Fire Department, though? No, they were Westing. I'm sorry. Two, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, they want to advertise for it. We'll have to know what it is before we can advertise for it. But is anybody here from the Center Town Fire Department? Center Town Fire Department, anybody here? They're not. We'll go over this. We were going to. They want us to advertise for bids for whatever they're buying with their ARPA money, and uh, we're going to need to know what it is before we can advertise. Uh, just. Well, we, oh, we well, don't want to do anything on item A. On the, this is the, uh, for the second reading of the uh, solar farm ordinance, it looks like uh, when we reviewed. Uh, uh, the the notice had not ran in the paper when it was when it was voted on, so we need to have a second reading that that uh, abides by that. However, in between the time of uh, that well, when it was read, I don't remember if it was June, July, uh, and now we were contacted by Kenneth. Um, uh, he had contacted uh, our office and wanted to discuss some of the matters uh, that are pertained to the solar, solar ordinance. So I don't know if you want to have an opportunity to speak prior to, or if you want to consider this after meeting with him, whatever the court would well, prefer. Well, if, if you wanted to, the, the proposal that we had, it might satisfy him if you want to read it. If it does, well, was that to the second reading? Well, and I don't want, and, and um, I couldn't hear that. that that's okay. He just indi kind of indicated whether the present ordinance um, fits everything that you may that you may request with respect to uh, the requirements of license and decommission and everything. But in speaking to you, I think you're, if, if I am correct, the biggest issue is the, the difference between the small scale and intermediate scale for a ground mount. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct because of the planning. Okay. And, uh, that, and what's already in place and uh, what went into that that is in place. So I don't know if it's the, the, the pleasure of the, the court to uh, put this on for maybe the next meeting, re-advertise for maybe the next meeting so you have the opportunity to meet with Kenneth. Uh, he seemed to be well versed in some of this matter. He, uh, I think he's trying to install a system himself uh, and had some concerns with maybe the, uh, the size of the small scale as opposed to the medium scale. Uh, raised some good points uh, with me that he may want to address with the court. Or residential? No, so the residential, Right now, one of the one of the things in speaking to Kenneth, the small scale is 25. It's a ground mounted. It has to be ground mounted. But yes. at 2,500 square feet is your small scale or less. Okay. Well, that's that's not a very big area. Okay. Like by example, an acre of land is, is around 45, 46,000 feet, um, and uh, so that would exclude a lot of people. A lot of people might have to. Uh, seek application and licensure through the court uh, that he that he felt that uh, uh, that may not be necessary. You know, there's some fencing requirements, no signage requirements, vegetation requirements, and all of that. Uh, so as to not maybe go over everything today, uh, if he if he's probably comfortable and the court's comfortable, maybe we can entertain this next meeting, re-advertise, and you have the opportunity to talk to him. I'm willing to meet after or, or whenever. Uh, but the 20, if, uh, I was under impression that if we changed the 2,500 square foot to an acre, it would satisfy your request. Is that correct? I believe so on that portion of it, yes. You know, uh, I haven't, you know, due to my plans, it's, this hit me all of a sudden. I didn't. 
see this in the paper until Sunday, so, or I can decide how it's on the uh, Sunday, so listen. I'm, I'm still going through the reevaluation of all my plans to I'll make sure there's not a problem, but I think one acre, yeah, I think one acre's no problem. Well, we will, with you and, and uh, Amanda will advertise in two weeks, we will talk to our second reading, and that's the only change I'm proposing at this time. So I'd, like to, other, I'd like to table the second reading and make a motion to do so. I'll second his motion and redo it in two weeks. Yeah. Do you want to do it on the 27th then? Yes. Okay, so we'll advertise for one week then? No, it'll be two. Okay. Okay. On favor table, say aye. Hope like that. So it is, and we'll look at anything else we might have too. But I was under the impression that was the main concern. So are, will you be here at four o'clock on? I don't know. Is he good? Do what? Yes. You'll be here at four o'clock. Can, can you be here at four next week? Okay. Miranda's saying uh, that wouldn't yes. be two weeks advertised, but with a week it's already been advertised. Yeah. 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 If we publicly yeah. notice it, yeah, then that's, yeah, that'd, be be okay. Okay. So that'd be fine. Okay. That'd be fine. And Kent, they're, they're indicating, because I know you have no trouble hearing, they're indicating maybe at four o'clock next week uh, here to discuss it. Is it? That would be. In two weeks, I mean. Two, two weeks. Two weeks. Two August 27th. August 27th at four o'clock. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, appreciate you coming. Um, we had a meeting at four, our road committee meeting, talk, uh, in length about the ordinance proposed to mowing. And uh, we're going to have a little discussion about it, but I believe our consensus was uh, that we didn't come up with the ordinance that would work today but we think we're going to add it to our one we already have in place with the uh, trash and nuisance ordinance. And then would be that way the enforcement would be under the emergency management litter abatement department, as well as the sheriff's department if they want to, but the litter abatement could help enforce it then if we do it on that one, where he couldn't if it's done any other way. So we're thinking that'll be the way to, to do it. Cause we do know this is a problem and we really do know that we don't want it happening. You know, we don't want to have a risk to people. So we really do want to take care of the problem. Uh, we decided to do it with a different uh, uh, paper. And uh, hoping to have it ready by uh, September the, what, what day is the meeting? First of September. Yeah. September 10th. We're hoping to have that amendment ready for the for that ordinance. We really do want to address it because there's too many things, too many questions about how it's going to do it. And when we got all that writing already in place on that other ordinance, it seems so uh, so uh, good to do. It. Glad to see some of you come out for it. I keep seeing Diana uh, head come around the back and then she disappears on me. Glad to see y'all here. Uh, this, uh, Larry spoke before on it. Uh, we'll allow anybody else five minutes if they want to talk about it anymore. But uh, we are going to address it in that ordinance. Larry, one of the things is that there was already an ordinance that we had. We thought we'd just go in. Instead of having another ordinance, because like, you get so many, it's easy to put it in that nuisance ordinance. And one of the things we looked at was like gravel and debris from, they, it was in this ordinance to talk about gravel from driveways and ditch, uh, maybe leaves from ditches. We were really kind of staying away from like if it's an act of God or weather where, you know, you if it got washed out on the road, you, that's not really the owners. They're not deliberately doing it. We're looking at more just the grass where it's more deliberate, where, you know, you've been warned a few times as opposed to, weather causes something to get on the road that's out of the landowner's control. We don't really want to penalize them for that. And we've already got this nuisance uh, ordinance, so that's what we're looking into, maybe just adding a few lines into the end. I don't see a problem with that. You know, as long as we can get it. You know, if you see grass out there on the road, stop. You know, say, hey, this is a warning. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if not, 
and you'll go on by. Yeah. The next time you see grass out there on the road, stop and give me a bang ticket. <clears throat> yeah, that's sort of the way we approach it. And it's usually the same people keep doing it over and over. They yeah. don't really like over doing it, I guess. So yes. Well. Yes. We're and that's probably with Adam, and he told me that he would police. Am I right, Adam? Okay. We're going to give him some. We're, we're going to give him a stick. Is that going to cover the entire county? It's not going to be city, right? It's going to be countywide. Yes, okay. countywide. I mean, I understand, like, when you're out there mowing, like, I have a steep bank. David's seen me mow my steep bank out there where I live. Yes. And I have to mow it at an angle, and, of course, the grass is going to blow on the road. But as soon as I am doing it, I blow every bit of that grass back out of my road. Me too. And it's right there where people can see me mowing from both directions, even if it's a motorcycle. I'm an avid motorcycle rider. Me and my husband both. I'm a passenger, but I'm still on that bike. Right. And when you're coming around a curve and there's grass in the road and you don't see it coming, you hit it, it's like ice. Yeah, I know. Now, we have a master just actually a rider. Yeah. That's okay to tell that, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, is that going to count if the city and the state workers are mowing too? Are they going to be worth, are they going to be held at the higher, at the same standard as we are? As we are? Because if they're, if they don't have to follow it, how do you expect you're the civilians to follow it. Uh, that's kind of gray yet where we'll have to address that with transportation cabinet at the state level. But uh, my thinking is they will have to start using their sweeper and blower as well. They have the equipment to go right behind the tractors and get it off. The county does have a blower that they put on the truck that comes behind the mowing machine. It's supposed to be blowing it off the road. Correct? Yes. And we talked about that. We talked about even farmers would sometimes would help us out by mowing alongside roads. It kind of helps our road department people out too, how to address that too. So there's still some issues looking into it. But you know, it comes down to law enforcement can always use their discretion. I told David here the other day that I felt that instead of a blower on the front of the truck, that thing don't do a very good job. A broom to go on the front of a truck, like a broom tractor at the mine or something. You know, I mean, they use them on these bridges to sweep the bridges off with. That would be the best thing to put on the front of the truck. Like a blade hook up on it, you have a broom hook up on it. You know, universal blade over it. Yeah. I'm not sure that we don't have that. We have used for gravel and, and sweep off our chipping seal after we chip it. And we, uh, we sweep it before we come back and put the thug coat on it. So we've actually got some of that equipment. But, all right, well, I appreciate everybody. Thanks for coming, and uh, we, do, we do like to see people at our meetings, so that's great that you're here. Uh, the, uh, it's a time of year that we just set our property tax rates. Uh, we pursuing it pretty much like we have the last couple years on the real estate tax. I think we're going to that we're going to keep it the same as it is now, the same rate. Um, in uh, which is uh, okay. Okay, point oh 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 seven six. Yeah, perfect. Um, so that's uh, seven and a half cents for every hundred dollars of your value. Um, so, um, would one of you guys make that motion to do that? This is on the real estate tax. I'll make the motion, yeah. Second and I'll, I'll second, yeah. Motion by Jason, second by both. Is there any uh, discussion? Like so that's the same rate that it is now. Uh, all in favor say aye. Holds like so. Then we come to the tangible portion. On the tangible, that's uh, yeah, that's the inventory tax. And uh, for the next five years, we're going to get a little tax off them whiskey houses. And after that, it all fades away. 
I'm really telling it a little wrong. For the next five years, our, our, it's going to increase. Then it'll start going down, and then a number of years it'll be completely gone. But uh, the next five years is the way it decreases. Our valuation is going to go up, and our revenue will be more than it is now. But we thought to get the ride out of that, we should uh, increase that to uh, 0.00084 cents. That's eight cents for $100 of their value. And uh, I would, if you would consider that, we would do that as well. It would be going from seven nine to eight four. Yes. And I did look. I, I just I'll go ahead and make the motion. I talked to Ann and I checked. Um, out of thirteen neighboring counties, we're still the second lowest in all the counties around in that. So I mean, by even increasing that, so I think we're still second lowest. But it will help us on our. Uh, this is was, after the increase will still be second lowest. I think yes. so. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that will help us on our whiskey barrel tax is kind of what that is a little bit. So I'll make the motion that we accept that four percent increase. Do I have a second? Part. I'll second. Second by both men. Any further discussion? Being none, I'll first say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. This last one is another animal. Motor vehicle and watercraft. We don't have a choice in it. It's set and it stays that way. We still have to do it every year, but there's no options in the raid. It's 6.3. And it's the same as last year, too, anyway. Yeah, right? same as the last whole bunch of years. Yeah. So we need a motion on that one as well. The state sits that judge? Yes. I'll make a motion next time. Motion by Bo. Second. Second by Brian. Got it. Uh, any further discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Uh, and need to acknowledge we got the health department's rates. We don't have any uh, choice on that. Uh, Larry Morphew is the one you complain to if you don't like it. I'm teasing. He smiles. Is it the same? He smiles. He's on the health board. And it's the same, yes. Actually, it's uh, uh, a tad less because it took a compensating rate. Acknowledge that we received. Second. Motion by votes. Second by Jason. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. You have the coast severance resolution, and that's just to take care of where, uh, the money we didn't spend from the last time. We had to readdress that, and it's uh, it's what we did last time. And you guys, it's got uh, uh, road money left in it; it's still there. However, we've all got to talk about that real quick. We have a very short window of time to identify where that's going and put a PO out on it. It don't have to be done, but the purchase order has to be out soon because we're going to do this resolution. I get the concurrence, or Miranda gets the concurrence from. Scott, our state representative, and Steve Meredith, our state senator, they have to agree with it. And then before we actually draw any of the money from the state, we got to have an exact detail of what it's going to be. So do I have a motion to approve that resolution? What's this uh, $100,000 to the Rosine Museum? What's that been on there? We've carried it over for three years for the annex building. It's been on there the last three years. And hopefully we're close on getting the quotes and the permits on that. On our blacktop money, how are we going to go about that to get in each district? It'll be in the next, if the other check's coming, we'll have it, it's not yeah, in this. Are we going to go over the road formula or how are we going to go? On that, yeah, we have, that's their, the one center now, it's where the road formula they didn't use the last time you did. So yes, absolutely, on Coast Service stays right with you. So right now, after all these projects, it lasts us $6,500 left over. So, do what touch After all these projects that are appropriated, at least it's $6,585.41 $6, left over. And the next quarter checks that comes in will go towards the uh, blacktop money. And I don't know how quickly those will happen to build up to do it, but we're going to come in as soon as it comes in. 
What if we don't get it before bad weather? It probably won't this year. Most likely we won't get it for this season. But now the the, the uh, there's other things that are going to happen road funds like the uh, flex that's going to happen. Your Hope Wheel Road will be blacked up this year. Soon we hope. And then we're applying for the contingency fund. And you've got roads in that, at least two in the contingency fund. We're the fund fifth fund. largest area wise in the state and probably the fifth worst roads in the state. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll make a motion we table this for the next meeting. I'll second that motion. Okay. What's the issues with it? Uh, uh, transparency and number, number having number knowledge five. of this previous to the meeting and not realizing that this was on the agenda until two hours before the meeting. That's my issue with it. I just I just feel like we were we were all discussing it so much that uh, with as much discussion that was going on that it'd be best if we just uh, talked about it throughout before uh, instead of having to hash it all out right here okay we can do that each of them can call me and talk about it okay. uh, but I, I believe I talked about all this with everybody in the past I believe the flyover thing we committed to that in the yeah. past okay we'll we'll uh, leave it off until next time then no action on that one uh, we can do a vote on it Not if everybody's not in agreement to that. Yeah, go ahead and table it. Go ahead and make a motion in a second. I've got that open in my Okay. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like that. Uh, Sheriff, come on up and talk to us. Good afternoon, how are you all? Good. Good. I come before you all to ask for a resolution for another grant. So far, the Sheriff's Department has been on a roll on receiving these grants. Uh, I work hard on every day going, going through the websites looking for these and I got an email from the Kentucky uh, Attorney General's office saying that they were going to open up another grant process and so I would like to apply for tasers. Um, tasers are kind of like cell phones. Once you buy them next year they're outdated and so the, the tasers that we're going to try to purchase are what they call the Taser 10 and for five years the contract with a warranty the batteries, the holsters, uh, everything that we'll need for the office is going to be roughly around $124,000 for five years. And so if y'all would be so generous as to pass this so I can work on that, I'd be forever grateful. <coughs> well, we certainly will appreciate you going out and trying to find it by grant money, so I think that's great. <coughs> I make a motion to apply. I second. Yeah. The, the best all I can hear. So we just got uh, we contact we uh, we contact them today, make sure that we're still in the running for it, which we are. We got it, yeah. and uh, they're waiting for the last part of it, so they can start sending checks out. So we can uh, we've already got all the deputies fitted for their vest, and then the, the guns are. We're just waiting for the check to get here, and we're going to place that order. I don't want to. I work for the federal government and the state government, so I, I don't put the the horse uh, behind the car. So I'm going to make sure everything's lined before we get here. So. All in favor say aye. Aye. Hold it like that. I'm signed I'm going to hand it to you, sure. We're going to give you a coffee so you can okay. go ahead and get the Olivia right away. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Um, give me the two. Uh, uh, three. Three personnel issues here. All right. And this is for the uh, golf course. This is the part this is. Golf, I see now. Uh, new hire, uh, open slot, uh, effective 811. Uh, we'll hire 
Vicki Decker at the golf course for $13.99 per hour, level one. This season? Where's it say that? Seasonal. Yeah, and that's seasonal. So it's a neat road call on it. Yeah, I said eight. Welcome. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Daniel? Yes. So that was done. Uh, the next is also golf course and it is also seasonal uh, and it's uh, Lance Seegers Lane. Lane, I'm sorry, Lane Laney Laney Lane. Lane Seegers uh, $13.99 per hour and this is seasonal Golf course effective 811. Okay. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Daniel? Yes. <coughs> and the last one, this is at the park. It also seasonal, open spot, level one, uh, maintenance. Uh, Dane Coots. Uh, and that's also effective uh, uh, the 11th and it's at 13.53 per hour seasonal spot. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Daniel? Yes. As I think all of you know, if you don't, uh, sad news now, our treasurer is uh, resigning, leaving us uh, July the 1st of uh, 2025. So she did give us a lot of uh, notice, but I wanna go ahead and create a search committee for the new treasurer. Uh, and uh, on that committee, I'm putting uh, Rip Wright, Bo Bennett, and Brenda Renfro, and uh, Rip will be in charge of setting the meetings and all that. Anne will be a consult on the on the committee. She will uh, consult with you guys because she can tell you answer any questions about what the job requires and all that. So uh, the goal would be have somebody in for training by January first. So. That's still, that's not a whole bunch of time, but it's a little bit of time. So I appreciate it if uh, Rip will get a hold of you, Bo, and Brenda, and I will meet sometime in the next little bit and decide how you're going to advertise, decide how you're going to, uh, how the process is going to work. Now we're ready for regular committee reports. Uh, was there any committees to report? I know the road committee met today. Which one of you report for them? Oh, we were talking, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I said, you, Jason, I think it's you. Just road committee report. It doesn't have to be long. I know we haven't done a lot, but we did. Well, that. yeah, this is, uh, I was talking to, mine's actually the pay scale. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, pay scale. I talked to the road foreman, and he's wanting to adjust something about the um, incentives we did for the road department, and as far as uh, road master and road scholar. Yeah. So he asked if I would call a meeting uh, for the pay scale committee meeting at four o'clock on August the twenty seventh. And I know we've already scheduled one, but this won't probably take but about ten minutes. Okay. Good enough. Yeah. So I'd like to schedule that meeting. Okay. You want me to go ahead and do the one on the golf course, that's committee? Yes, let's go ahead and go with the uh -huh. golf committee. 
Uh, I believe Bo serves with you on that too, is that right? He's on pay scale too, yeah. Yeah. So on the, on the golf course committee, uh, we have a lot of problems with our golf courts. They're 10 years old and they're starting to, steering wheels are messing up and stuff like that. They've been good for several years. Uh, so um, Mr. Seegers asked me to get out there and, and Bo, they have uh, talked about their golf carts and I said, well, let's see what we can get out of ours. First time we bought them 10 years ago, we didn't have anything down. But now what we're gonna see what we can do is that we'd like to advertise uh, to sell the ones we have and see what kind of bids we get for 18 gas golf carts. Uh, I have the um, bid rolled up, we we'll put it in the county paper to see what we can get as a bid for the fleet of them. Let's see what kind of money we can bring in. And then if that comes in the way we want it, we would like to go ahead and take that money and actually do another lease program for five years for a new fleet of golf carts out there. Um, like I said, we've had these for 10 years on that program and it's actually a pretty good program I think we paid them off what they've been paid off five or six years now but they're just kind of at least maybe more and we're putting more we're putting money into them it's kind of so we just said let's see what we can get out of them and then we'll turn around and actually i have a motion here too do we need to go ahead and that motion to advertise for bid for again yes. to go ahead and make that as a form of motion yes please okay to see in the paper yeah yeah do we do this, is just for bids. this is just for bids for a fleet of golf carts i make a second Okay. And it also says on here a little bit that you know that'd be in by Mark Golf Car Bid, that'll be in uh, by August 23rd, uh, 3rd to the uh, Ohio County Fiscal Court. If you have any questions, you can call Steve Seekers. There's a number here. Uh, so, okay. We got a first and second for that. And then you did get second? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Mark. On, on first, aye. Aye. Both like that. And then what we'd like to do is if this comes in, is go ahead and submit bids for 18 uh, golf carts to replace those if the bids come in the way we're to our liking and that way we won't have to go ahead and do that again too and purchase uh, new uh, gas golf carts a fleet of 18 of them so we would like to advertise for bids for the yes. pur purchase of uh, 18 new golf carts yeah, and then we can go ahead and do both those ads we're going yes. to do them both just go ahead and do them both and that way if the one comes out the way we like it we're ready to go and that's for lease. And that's for lease. Lease style. Lease style. And of course, we pay down all the money we get out of the old one. Yes. We pay down. And last time we didn't have that. Any further discussion? Oh, I'm sorry, we didn't get a second. Okay. Michael seconded it. Okay. Any further discussion? Being on all paper, say aye. Aye. Opposed, like say. Motion carried. We're going to move around y'all to call with you guys first. Mr. Cook has been here quite a while. And uh, he was after Master's comments, but I'm going to move him up so we don't have to keep him all night. So, Mr. Cook, come on up and talk to us. My name is Timothy Cook. I reside at 2920 Corn Landing Road in Drexel, Kentucky. I'm not a resident of Ohio County, nor do I own any ground in Ohio County. Could you talk closer to the mic? Not very much of a public speaker, sir. It's fine. It's fine. Right. We're not that bad. Uh, I come before you because it's my understanding that Rochester Dam Regional Water Commission was created by this board. Uh, I think there was some oversight in some of the planning, uh, the lack of representation of Gilbert County. The hiding of the program by advertising in the Bowling Green paper. Uh, I'd like to discuss this sometime in a private matter. I came prepared for a two hour presentation, which I don't think is appropriate at this time. Now, in this meeting, we hold them to about five. I do, I do, you and I had talked. Yes. And uh, I gave you some information, one piece of it. I didn't remember correctly, so I called you up and corrected myself. Understand? Because I've, uh, it's a partnership, the Water Commission partnership with Ohio County and Butler County, but the Water Commission is independent. Once it was appointed, uh, it was done by an executive order here, uh, and uh, there were several counties actually at the meeting when we signed that 
water commission into a place, but it says the ownership of it basically is Ohio and Butler County jointly. Mm -hmm. uh, but the water commission is independent. Uh, that's uh, that's about it, and I would ask if Justin will make a comment on. It. Well, I mean, it is it is an independent agency that's that may have been created by the county, but a lot of times they want some separation there. So whatever actions they've taken, uh, you know, that's something that you would address with them that you probably already have, uh, and would have to take action with them. If you if you have some issue or problem that they've done, then you know, certainly it needs I'm to be. I'm misunderstanding, sir. You created a commission that has overreach over me without me having any legislative representation. So what what I would have to do is I'd have to go look. I was not present. I was not presiding or, or uh, serving at that time. I'd have to go back and look at how it was created and everything to give you more specifics. I just don't know off the top of my head. Uh, our county has two reps. So. Yeah, I mean most of the time in some of these independent boards. Uh, we will provide some type of representation through our selection of who that may be. Uh, and so whether Muhlenberg County was properly represented or not, I, I, you know, that, that'd be a question for Muhlenberg County as to why they may not chose to do that. And then we could just look to see how it was uh, uh, first enacted, but I, I don't have that in front of me. I'd have to go back and look. Muhlenberg yeah. County and Butler County Fiscal Court are prepared to write documents that they have nothing to do with this. Well, I mean, Butler it, did. They're they're part of it for sure. Butler County Physical Court. On the ground Butler County that. Physical Court is prepared to create a document for me. You might be confused with Morgantown City Government with County Government. I remember Judge Fields was the judge, and I know he was here. I understand. Presence and uh, participation are two different things, sir. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank, thanks, ma'am. Sorry I kept you waiting so long. I really am. Uh, now we're going to call the magistrates for business. I'm going to start on the uh, fifth end. Start with you, uh, Blair. I don't have anything other than I wish we could speed up getting our uh, block topping done before bad weather. Okay. That's all I have, Judge. Okay. Well, uh, we all agree with you for sure. Brian? Uh, just to clarify on the third district constable, that was not found out about by me until about 20 minutes before the meeting. We actually had thought that this would go to the point. Official notification of vacancy and all that, we had really thought they would not require the special election when we found out. I only found out yesterday that it actually did require. Okay. So I haven't known very long. Uh, Chanda, I did. I, I wish I had a thought to try to call you yesterday when I found out about it yesterday morning. But we already had the appointment lined up, and it was aimed to do that. That we didn't even. Their candidate put their paperwork in just minutes before our candidate did. And so, therefore, I think that it should have been postponed for two weeks for you to consider both candidates. It had to be done by today. Today was the state deadline to get it on the ballot. So you knew that they were putting a candidate in? Yeah, I did. Yesterday did you, morning. Who contacted them? Yesterday morning. Uh, I'm not sure they contacted us, actually. And then I verified with Beth that they were right, because I didn't think there was going to have to be an election on it. And and uh, they called me and said that it was, and one set up the meeting. You did openly did. say that you didn't even consider our candidate. Once you found out that there was two candidates, you should have took a moment to consider both. I had already made the, I had already you made, made the decision, decision based on, off on one candidate. Before that, two. even if that candidate had the one I pointed, and I think there's people here that knows this, even if if he had not been nominated by the party, he was still already in mind. He was going to be the appointment either way. That decision was already you made. You already made your mind up before you knew who else was going to be on there? Yes. That was right, who that's was going not to, the way that's supposed because to be. Did I was, you know that? I was thinking he was going to serve the rest of the term from appointment. Okay. Did you know that that's not the way that's supposed to work? You're supposed to consider all parties involved? If there uh, you may be, uh, but that's who I was going to point. And, okay. and if it had been 
if the it's other party could like nominate a, somebody different, right. it would still wouldn't. I, that, understand, I understand what you're saying. It I'm still just wouldn't saying matter. That it doesn't seem very ethical. It still wouldn't matter. Oh, it still wouldn't matter. Okay, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, uh, no, no comment. We have somebody else that wants to speak. I'm sorry. I would just like to make it known that it has been twice this summer that we have Two times. received extremely short notice regarding potential. Could you talk up to the mic? I can't hear. I just want to make it known that it has happened twice this summer that we have received very little notice for potential ballot candidates. And I would like to know a little bit more about how to be made aware of such vacancies. Uh, actually, I'm notified only to make the appointments in this case. In the other case, I didn't make the appointment. The governor's office makes the point when yes. Brian, Brian was appointed. I understand. But it I wasn't our to thing to, to get it out. When At some vacancies. point, the Secretary of State office notifies best. Are, are these vacancies part. posted somewhere is what we're trying to get at. Like is the public notified so the public can get involved? Because there's lots of people out there that we've been talking to during our canvassing. They want to be in these offices and they want the chance, but they just are not made aware of when these vacancies come available. And so I think it would be truly helpful if we came up with something so that the entire public both can of these, be made aware. Both of these have been come up right up on us. So I understand one that. What, I'm, what we're getting at is how do we make the public more knowledgeable of these positions so that more people have the opportunity to fully represent their communities like they want to. They're begging to. I'm out there talking to them. And they're very upset that they're not giving the opportunity to be able to have that chance to represent their communities. It's and just really unnerving when it has happened twice. And, uh, of course, in the election, everybody can file at the end of, at, for the term, you know. Oh, that's that's a perfect file. solution. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jason. I don't. Bo, I think Bo wanted to say something. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you my time. Um, I just got one thing. I've been trying to get it on here, and I keep forgetting about it. I'm just going to pass the phone around. I'm asking the surplus this small road grader and it does run we really don't have no use for it um, and what we're trying to do is trying to surplus this in order to probably try to get a uh, what is it? A small road grader and we're, we're just wanting to surplus that on gut deals to see how much we can get out of it because we're in need of a couple more mowers probably won't get what we need for a new mower but just asking sure, the blessing for uh, surpluses. Small sure. road grade. I'm hoping it would bring in It's a good grade. And, it makes so and whatever y'all want, and even if y'all want to put it. Yes, that's not a road park. No. And even if y'all want to put a uh, reserve on it, by all means, whatever y'all want to do on that. Well, we'll, we'll, do you have a reserve you want to put on it? Or? That's a good question from Nick, maybe. I don't know a whole lot about the road grade itself. So. It well, um, it's uh, I'd say we got those good, good ones at the road garage. I mean, yeah. we can allow you surplus yeah. and then you can like move it up. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, on the go kart track itself. Yep, yeah. that's all I've got. Oh, well, can you send me the bid or whatever you have on? Yes, I will. Thanks. Hey, what well, I've kind of hanged up on that thing is really good on race track. Who, who I'll said that? I'll say that. Motion set. Well, I, I missed that motion. What was that motion? The latter, the surplus. Surplus is greater so he can advertise it on gun deals and see what he's getting out of it. Okay. Uh, I'm supposed to say aye. Uh, uh, Hope like saying aye. Okay. Um, I guess we're down to Michael. Nothing from the first district. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. We've done a lot of business tonight. I appreciate you taking care of it. And, uh, uh, and uh, Bo, let me know what your top offer is on that when you advertise it. Well, all right. Thank you. Anybody else in the general public got something to say? Anybody else got anything else for the good of the body?
Michael, do you have a guest here you're going to introduce? My youngest born male child, Russell, is here. <laughs> Hi, Russell. <laughs> Not, he wouldn't embarrass you, so I did. And I see our former Sheriff Tracy's here. And uh, everyone is here. We appreciate you coming. Appreciate all our guests. Yeah, appreciate everybody. We'd love to have a <coughs> crowd every time. Uh, seems like the only way we can get one is if we bring up a smoking ordinance or a Second Amendment ordinance, we can fill this place up then. Time's up. All right. <laughs> now, this means <laughs> <is> <laughs>